All right, so it's Julio Ricardo Varela, and your name? Uh, is? Jose Gomez. Jose Gomez. And Jose, where are you from? Uh, McCann, Texas. Exa- and you're a sophomore at MIT? Yes, I am. And tonight, Underwater Dreams screening, you're on the panel, and you've decided to announce that, that you are... I'm documented, yes. You're undocumented. Yeah, and at MIT. Yes. At MIT. And I, that's really interesting you say that, because mm-hmm. I remember seeing, reading uh, the Washington Post, there was a Harvard student, uh, saying... Yeah, what was his name? Da, I, Dalio? Dalio, but yeah. he was saying that in MIT, that's not a place to go. Yes. Uh, so that, what, what was this gonna? Like, what got you into MIT from... Like, tell us your story. Okay, so get into MIT. Um, well, I mean, it was passed from the start, right? Just... I tried to live my childhood as normal as I could. Right. I mean, you still have the fear of deportation and all that. Uh, I got to high school, and I realized, you know, I want to go here. I want to go to all these other schools as well. I want to go to school after this. But, I mean, it's not only going to be difficult getting there physically. It was going to be difficult financially to also pay for the schools. Uh, Texas is one of the very few states, one of the 13, 14 states that offers in-state tuition, so at least in Texas, I kind of would have had an easier chance, right. but I wanted to go to MIT, and I found out that MIT offered uh, full financial aid, uh, need-based, not uh, scholarship-based, and this is from uh, federal funds or from their own uh, alumni donations, and so uh, I decided I wanted to apply to MIT either way. Uh, I was going to figure out how to get there later. Right. I was just going to apply and see what happens. Uh, that was my plan at the beginning, and then DACA happened in the summer before my senior year. So I was like, okay, I can get there now. So, so you, to. so you were like considering it. You had, but then when DACA happened, so that happened what three, four years ago? That happened in two thousand. That's happened in two thousand twelve. Yes. So then was, you saw DACA and you applied for it. I, I saw. I was going to apply either way. Right. But I saw DACA and I was like, okay, now there's a chance for me getting there, even right. if I want to right. actually go there. And so uh, I applied, and I, I, I don't know what bubble I checked because there. I think there's only like two bubbles: international or domestic. <laughs> I believe I checked international just be, to follow the guidelines yeah, of where yeah. I was born. And I applied. I got in. I was like, okay, great. This is great. I can I can make it now. And I told my parents, if I get in, I'm just going to go. So you got into MIT. I mean, stop yeah. there for a second, man. Mm-hmm. Like, MIT. This is not like, you know, what were your parents thinking? Like, where are you, where are you from? Like, um, where, I mean, with... My parents were thinking, what's MIT? Right. So. I mean, I'm just curious. Because, like, it's, like, it's you know, this is the premier... Yeah. College you know, en- or Engineering, yeah. like, technology, high, you know, in the world. Mm-hmm. And what, when, you, when you got the letter... After everything that you went yeah, through. Yeah, so I clicked I clicked to check uh, the decision. Yeah. And I had gotten in. I was just like, okay. I didn't have that in plans. I had already signed, like, dorm contracts and everything with yeah. uh, UT Austin. Yeah. I was going to go to UT Austin. I was like, okay. But then once I got in here, I was like, okay, I got to make a 180, make plans for coming to, right. to MIT. And uh, first, I had to explain to my parents how big of a deal it was for me to actually come here. Um, they didn't know exactly what it meant to be MIT, but after a while, they caught on. Yeah. And they realized how big it was, and they were just really proud. I mean, yeah, just like, sure. any, like any parents I'm would sure. be. I'm sure. But they're still a little scared because, I mean, I was going to be 18, go on my own for the first time out of uh, the, re- the South Texas region. Right, right. I can't get out of the South Texas region. Right. And so for the first time, I was able to leave, and I was going to leave 2,000 miles away. It was, it was a big shocker to them, but... I had to do it because this is what I wanted to do. This is going to be the best place for me to get the education I wanted to get. Right. I mean, the Air Astro, Air Astro Department here is amazing. Just celebrated 100 years. So what are you, what are you studying? Uh, aerospace engineering. Aerospace engineering. Yes. Great. Which is slightly kind of awkward being undocumented and being in aerospace because <laughs> so a lot of the places I would like to work in, a lot of the places that hire aerospace engineers are military contracts, the uh, defense sector, right. NASA, uh, right. space uh, sorry, uh, government agencies. Right. And pretty much... And also, just even private uh, private companies, they fall under ITAR, which yeah. pretty much says you can't give certain material, or you, certain material can be exposed to international uh, citizens. So you got some issues there, but so that's okay, but you're here. But I'm here. here. Yeah, but, so let's get but, back to but, your story. So but, you're here. Yeah, I'm here, but then the next thing is what happens in 17. I mean, I graduated 17. Right. Obama's out 16. What happens after that? Right. I'm going to be, again, fully undocumented. I mean, now I'll, I'll finish with my aerospace engineering degree, but I mean, what's that going to mean for me? Right. They're just going to leave me completely so, back and so what did So what got you to here? Like, how did you, just tell me, like, you got to MIT, mm-hmm. you didn't say you were, you know, you, you got in, okay. you know, and now you, you're part of Dream, Dream MIT, Dream right? it, so yeah. what, Dream It, that's what it's called, Yeah, that's Dream what it's it, called. we're, All we're right. calling it Dream It. <laughs> Dream It, I like it. Yeah, so, I mean, 
We got here. We met with some of the document community. Uh, one of the admissions officers made that possible. Uh, I believe Sophia requested it. Uh, yeah. She was. She's one who's, of the. Who's Sophia? Sophia. Did yeah, Sophia Campos, uh, Campos uh, undergraduate from UCLA, now graduate student here at MIT. Okay. Uh, she was a big part of the of the mo uh, yes. documented movement, and she's yeah. part. She's on the board of United We Dream. Yes. And so as soon as she got here, and she heard that there were more undocumented students here, she wanted to get them together to kind of form a community, sort of what she had back in UCLA. Right. And the first year, we kind of just were since it was. A first year here we're just so you're a freshman we're a freshman, freshman. we're you're like, we're you're really like, exploring i'm making you're like i'm in boston what's going on i'm in cambridge like i got it's cold <laughs> yeah first we're we're just gonna take classes you know figure right. it out and then right. later on we decided you know we need to form a group you know because there's certain things that we need help with that aren't available there's questions that we need answered and there's no one that and yeah. an administration or anywhere in mit that we can go to right. for that help and just a support because like undocumented students know I mean, it's hard for other people who or don't know what it means to be a documented and, and then who aren't undocumented to know exactly what it means to be right. a documented. And so it was just going to be a support group and just kind of, yeah. you know, do a little bit of activism as well. You know, get right. we, ha we have a, a, a greater voice now that we're here and we have to definitely use our voice now that we're at MIT. Yeah, because, Every, I was, because here you are at MIT. Now. It's like you, yeah. you guys acknowledge the fact that here you are at mm -hmm. You know, one of the most prestigious universities in the world, as undocumented students. Yeah, and you feel like there's a responsibility to that. That there's a, that it's almost like you're. Yeah, that there's we, a privilege, and we have to speak out. And yeah, I so mean, how did you guys get to the decision? Did it make sense, or were you like uh, yes, it, scared, or were you like? I mean, it made sense. Uh, at least I wasn't scared. I'm always been. Yeah. I haven't been completely just open out about being undocumented, but I've never been scared of just publicly speaking about what right. I wanted to do. I mean, there's something I wanted to do, but I couldn't necessarily do in McAllen. Right. Because you always have there, at least in McAllen, it's a lot easier to be deported than I can be here. Especially now with DACA, I can't actually be, or I mean, at least I have. You have DACA. Uh, yeah, I have DACA, pretty much. And so uh, it gives me it gave me a greater voice to speak out. And so we felt that we had to. I mean, this isn't something new. There's people in other Ivy Leagues. There's there's people in just other but universities nearby. But is this the first time that MIT's? This is the first time. This is the first time MIT because it was, uh, 2017, which is my year, was the first year that they uh, accept, knowingly accepted documented students. Before a couple of people so had slipped over the cracks. Their, yeah. So, so they knew you were coming in as an undocumented. Yes, like, they knew. I, but you, but there was a privacy issue, and they were going to let you decide whether to come. Like, is that what? Well, I mean, they weren't going to reveal. Like, no, MIT, I mean, I mean, it was your still your choice. Yeah, it, it was our choice to come out. We decided to do it with the film. Yeah, and so. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a great time for us to, you know, put our voice out there and get get our message um, out there. That, the message that we want to share, which is, I mean, a, a lot of the things that need to happen uh, for us. I mean, it's kind of, it's going to be a really awkward place to where we're graduating. We can't have jobs. Right. As MIT graduates, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying we deserve jobs because just because we're at MIT, but because we're at MIT, we we've gotten the high level education, which should, you know, at least we should have the opportunity to. <laughs> get the jobs that we want right you know have the chance to get those jobs and not just flat out just be rejected because we're undocumented right so when did you mm -hmm. find out like your parents came from uh north of mexico north of yeah, mexico yeah. and when did you find out that uh, i i kind of knew to my childhood the whole time <laughs> yeah that's right you're an mit student you kind of already aware of it yeah right? i mean like it, it was it's easier to comment on because also also that i mean your parents would tell you like yeah. watch well, your out parents for this. were pretty upfront with yeah they were pretty yeah. upfront with it i mean it wasn't something that was completely just hidden right. and so i knew my entire life and so yeah. it was something i always had in the back of my head uh throughout the entire years and so, I mean, I, I knew I knew what it meant. Right. And, yeah. I mean, as, as as I grew up, I had even more and more challenges. Right. Be, being that I couldn't work, I, being I couldn't... Right. But you seem to yeah. have managed, you know, here you are. And yeah. Uh, but how does it feel, personally? I mean, with you look at your life, I mean, what are you, are you even 20? I'm no, you uh, 19. You're 19 yeah. years old. Yes. I mean, you're, so you're looking at this now, you're looking at your past, you're looking at your future. Obviously, like, people think, you know, undocumented people are, mm -hmm. you know... Whatever you know, they look at it and yeah. they look at you through a negative lens. How do you fight that? Like that's like what? What do you do? Coming out? I mean, yeah. I mean, if I hadn't come out, if I if, if I didn't tell you that I was undocumented, there was no way you would have known. Right. As that's another regular MIT student, as capable as uh, I mean, as capable as an MIT student can be, and I mean, you would have known not known me any different. Right. Like my my English is uh, I can speak English well. Um, I don't stand out from the rest of the population somehow. And even if I did, how should that matter? Right. And I mean, no, you're probably we, you, look we, like yeah. a, you look like the multicultural <laughs> MIT student. Yeah, I mean, we we, we are we are your neighbors, we are your yeah. friends, we are we are your coworkers at at times. And so, if you can distinguish, if if 
I mean, even if you could, this doesn't excuse, but I mean, you can distinguish us. We are as American as everybody You're else here. is going to be. You're here. And yes. How long have you been here? Like, uh, when did you come? 14. I came at five. So 14 you came at years. Five. 14 so out of 19. You've been here 15 years. Yeah. And, 15, I, th and yeah. this is, and the, the typical question you ask streamers is, I mean, this is home. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. You felt, I mean, you're, you're a kid from McAllen. Yeah. You know, I, it's like, you know, so what do you want out of it? Like, what, in 2017, what do you expect? What do you expect uh, the, I mean, the, the, this country to be passing? It, right? it should be passing full, full on immigration reform, not just for youth, not just the DREAM Act, but full on immigration reform because why should my family not be also allowed to, to live here? They lived here, they contributed here, they paid taxes. What, right. why, why should they not? I mean, this is. If, if they made their lives here and they've done nothing wrong, why should they, we force them to just halt their lives and move them elsewhere? Right. Well, we I appreciate mean, yeah. that. So I really appreciate your time. Okay. Enjoy the film yeah. and, uh, and enjoy the panel. Right. Thank you very Great. much.